This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you my new old project. It is new old because I have already made a similar project, but uh, now I upgraded the PCB and I also made some significant changes to the software. So the old project is this one here. It's the custom PCB for the ADS-1256 AD converter. It's a 24-bit high resolution and relatively high speed 30 kilo samples per second uh, AD converter. And as you can see, the board also has a microcontroller. So you just plug it in in the USB and then uh, you can collect data. So this is the old board. But uh, recently I finished my custom and official Arduino library for the ADS-1256 AD converter. So everything is on GitHub and it is in the official Arduino library. And I can say that uh, this is the best uh, library for the ADS-1256 so far. It is very well documented. It has been tested uh, for eight different microcontrollers and it works uh, very well with all of those. And it is in the official Arduino library. So if you go to the library manager in your Arduino IDE and you search for ADS-1256, my library will pop up there. And then you just download it. It has some example code. So then within a few minutes, you can uh, get your ADS-1256 up and running. And now here we are with this uh, new board. So this is still a kind of the same design, but I made uh, some updates as compared to the previous uh, design. And uh, then I will assemble one of these boards and uh, show you how it differs from the old one. So if I compare it with the old board, uh, you can see that the size is like more than one centimeter uh, shorter. Uh, the width is uh, just a little bit uh, narrower, but it could not be more narrow because of the size of the connector. And then uh, I did a little uh, realignment and added some new text to make everything more uh, clear. But uh, yeah, as you can see the chip, uh, the crystal, the microcontroller and everything is the same. And then the board got a smaller switch and also a USB-C connector. Uh, we will see if the USB-C will work, I really hope. And don't mind the cable here because uh, that was just, uh, it's not a correction, but I was testing something else with the board. But the 1.1 revision is already a working uh, board. And then uh, this is the 1.2 revision. And this is, this is supposed to work well with the library and supposed to work uh, pretty well with everything. So we will see uh, how it will operate after I uh, yeah, assemble it. As you can see, we also have a nice uh, stencil here and both the stencil and the board was provided by the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. So go to their website and check out their Christmas discounts and uh, Christmas offers because you can buy a lot of nice uh, things for Christmas, decorations, different kind of tools and uh, many other things. So I highly recommend you to visit their website. And I also want to thank PCBWay for the past two years for working together and uh, realizing very cool projects. So please check PCBWay's website and see if you can find anything interesting there. And also don't forget to visit my project page on PCBWay's website because you will find all the resources for this specific PCB. So yeah, coming back to this board, uh, I have nothing else to do just to assemble it and uh, check if it works. And then uh, after we made sure that it works uh, properly, we will go to my computer and I will show you how to start up this board. And I will do a few basic tests uh, using my library so we can see how the board uh, operates.
So we are looking at the board after soldering. This is the microcontroller and then I just want to look around if there are any shorts or any weird uh, soldering. So to test the board you can do the following, obviously I can just uh, plug it in using the uh, USB-C connector, uh, but I have another idea. So I put a few tabs on this uh, board, one is the ground here, G and D, and this is the VUSB, so this is 5 volt. Uh, so actually I can feed 5 volt uh, through this tab and uh, put the ground here and then power the board. So what I only do is that I circumvent this fuse and this ferrite bead, uh, which would actually come from the uh, input voltage uh, pin. Uh, so I directly feed the capacitors. So then if everything goes well, uh, we will see a few LEDs uh, lighting up. And then uh, I will also monitor the uh, current consumption. So then if the current consumption is not too high, uh, then I can be sure that there are no short circuits on this board. So then uh, I will uh, go back to the USB port and then I will monitor uh, the reference voltage and the 3.3 uh, volt digital supply for the AD converter. And then uh, I will solder the final pins if, I, if I'm sure that the rest of the board is fine. Otherwise uh, I could not fit uh, here and here uh, due to the connectors. And then we go to the computer and see uh, how to use this uh, with the computer. So let's check this uh, through the power supply. So I have these two connectors right here. So this is ground, this is uh, 5 volts. And what I will do, I will touch the ground here and then touch the 5 volts uh, here. And uh, the maximum allowed current is about, or not about, it is exactly uh, 200 milliamps. So we will see if uh, we go beyond that or not. So ground comes to ground and then the voltage comes here. And I can see that the LEDs light up and the consumption is uh, 25 milliamps. So there are no short circuits, uh, it seems. So then I can move to the USB connector. So the voltage looked fine. So I can connect uh, the USB-C connector and I'm powering it only with a mobile charger and we will see uh, what will happen on the rest of the board. So I can see the LEDs on. So let's uh, test them. So I will just measure the voltages around uh, the circuit and I can actually use this row of pins because they are all common, so that's uh, ground. So then uh, first let's check the input voltage. And uh, that is uh, 5 volts, so that's fine. And then we have 
or supposed to have 3.3 watt here and that's 3.3 so this will power the digital side of the AD converter and then this will be the reference voltage which is uh, nearly 2.5 volts 2.497 so it's uh, close enough so then uh, so far so good uh, it seems fine so what I need to do now is I need to at least uh, solder these pins and these pins but uh, especially these pins because I will need to program this somehow so I quickly solder these pins and uh, maybe this connector as well just to make our life easier and then we will go to the computer to check the rest of the board so the board is ready so we are also ready to go to the computer and test it and uh, you can see that uh, these are the rest of the uh, GPIO pins uh, from the microcontroller so I just uh, put all those microcontroller pins uh, to the both sides uh, which are not used with the AD converter so if you want to uh, use this circuit with something else for example with a display or something then you can use the pins but uh, most importantly here we have the ICSP pin so we can use these uh, four pins uh, to use another Arduino to program the microcontroller here for the first time because if it doesn't come with a bootloader you might need to use the ICSP uh, pins which are basically the pins for the SPI as well and then you have to use another uh, Arduino uh, to program uh, the microcontroller for the first time and after programming with ICSP you will be able to upload code to the microcontroller via the USB port and then on this side I have my, yeah, let's say favorite uh, connector for this uh, board. So actually this is maybe a bit overkill. Uh, if you look at the parameters, this can bear 300 volts at 8 amps. And we definitely don't measure that with this. But uh, why I chose this uh, connector is because I can have these uh, screw terminals in. So there. And then I can just uh, add the uh, wires to it. So on the top we have the uh, positive uh, pins and uh, then at the bottom we have the negative pins. And of course now I cannot access these uh, bolts so it's not easy to screw them but I can just yeah, remove it, change the uh, wires whenever I need it and then just uh, plug it back. It's uh, relatively easy. And then on the back side of the board, yeah, obviously there is my website, please visit it. And then uh, here are the pins and a bit of uh, lint because I cleaned uh, the connections. And then uh, one more thing that I'm very interested about is that this uh, thing here. So you can see uh, these bridges uh, with some wires and that is actually the bridges for uh, the power which is coming from the uh, USB connector and also for the data because the data plus and the data minus uh, pins of this uh, specific uh, USB-C connector uh, they have two pins each and therefore uh, they have to be connected so I'm curious if it will work but uh, yeah we will see very soon so let's go to my computer and let's check how this board works all right so as you can see on the display I have uh, the Arduino source code from my library and I prepared my uh, microcontroller based uh, board here. So this is the very first time I connected to my computer so let's see what happens. So you could hear that something was uh, going on. So let's see if we see something on the serial port. and uh, there is no port information. So now I can uh, jump to the device manager. So here is the device manager and we have to see if uh, the microcontroller is recognized or not. So that should be somewhere under here. So it's not here in the first uh, USB serial bus controllers menu. But let's see if it's here and it's there. So the device is in fact uh, recognized but it is probably in bootloader mode so that's why I don't see it as a serial device 
So what we will need to do is that we will need to upload a bootloader and the code uh, to this microcontroller using another microcontroller. So I will prepare an Arduino Nano and I will show you how that works. So then uh, what you have to do is that uh, you wire up an Arduino Nano and uh, make it into an ICSP programmer and then connect it uh, to my board and then in uh, the Arduino ID you have to open the tools and then of course we have to select uh, the corresponding Arduino Nano board or any board that you will use as a programmer and then uh, you have to select the corresponding bootloader for your programmer and uh, I highlight this because some Arduino Nano that I use is using the old bootloader so you have to be aware of that and then uh, again back to the tools uh, you have to change the programmer as Arduino as ISP because that will mean that you will use an Arduino to program another Arduino so this is done and then you take your uh, Arduino and uh, wire up everything uh, so you wire up the programmer Arduino which in my case that's an Arduino Nano and connect it uh, to my board using the ICSP or SPI uh, pins and then uh, all you need to do is that you just have to uh, burn the bootloader on the other board and uh, once uh, that is done uh, you can disconnect everything from the board and then you can connect your AD converter board to the USB uh, using the uh, USB-C connector. So let's check how that uh, part works. So I connected my AD converter board and uh, let's select uh, the corresponding microcontrollers. So we just go back to the Adafruit 32U4 breakout. So then the board is the Adafruit board. Uh, it already found the COM port and we have to set the programmer back to Arduino ISP because now we are uploading the code via the uh, USB uh, port. So let me press the upload button. And then uh, during uploading, when you see these uh, lines popping up, press the reset button on the microcontroller board uh, because that will put it into upload mode. And then you just wait and uh, it will be successful. So let's open the serial port and let's see if we can communicate with the microcontroller. So yeah, this seems fine and uh, these seem fine as well and actually if we get these numbers uh, they mean that the microcontroller is able to connect to the AD converter so we have now uh, successfully communicated with the AD con converter but for example if I uh, press T that sends a test command to the uh, microcontroller to send back another message so that's done and then uh, we can get a single conversion by pressing the A and then since nothing is connected to the output then uh, we just see some yeah, dummy values because the inputs are floating and then uh, we can also do some uh, speed tests and so on so first let's uh, go, go back to the code so this code has been carefully documented on my github so there is a PDF file where I uh, talk about this code for a long, long uh, time. And also you can uh, get a tutorial on my previous video for this library because uh, there is not too much difference between uh, the library which I introduced in that video and the library that I am talking about here. So the only difference is that I made this library to work on certain ESP32 microcontrollers and I also cleaned up the code a little bit and uh, I also officially released it on Arduino's official library. So as I mentioned it previously when I was showing you the hardware if you go to the library manager and uh, type in ADS1256 
then it is my library and only my library which uh, comes up because uh, mine is the only one which is available through the official Arduino uh, library uh, catalog. So then you just uh, download it. I already installed it, of course. Uh, and then uh, if you click on the more info, then you will be redirected to my uh, GitHub and you will land on this page and you will be able to uh, get through all the files. And here, uh, this link contains the documentation for the library. So then uh, if you just uh, scroll through this library, you will see everything. Uh, I made some summary about the AD converter itself. But then of course, if we go further, then uh, there will be everything uh, discussed regarding the code, how the code works, how the library works and so on and so on. So once again, I, I'm not going to explain too much for, about the code because everything has been explained uh, previously. And uh, also there is a good uh, PDF documentation for it. However, I want to prove you that uh, this thing works. So let me do a few things. So first of all, I implemented a speed test, which uh, samples 15,000 samples, and then uh, it returns the time and the calculated sampling rate based on the measurement time. Uh, on the serial terminal. So in order to make sure that uh, we change the sampling speed, I made a function somewhere down here, uh, this guy here, which directly uh, selects a sampling rate. So for example here the example line says that if I send F3 uh, then the sampling speed will be 3750. So let's try that. So F and 3. And now the microcontroller sends back a message that it got the message and uh, it reads the register on the AD converter and sends back the value of the register. And it's the same as the submitted value. So that's nice. So now I run a test by sending the letter capital B. And we will have to wait about four seconds to get the response. And you can see that uh, in order to get uh, 15,000 samples, the code spent this much time on sampling. And based on the time and the number of samples, the sampling rate was this much. So it's exactly what we said. And if I send uh, F0, that's the highest sampling frequency. That should be 240, and that is 240. So now this should uh, get back us uh, some value close to 30,000 and uh, it should be done within yeah half a second because 15,000 samples uh, taken. Yeah, so half a second and we have 29,687. I'm still trying to figure out why this is not getting uh, 30,000 and I think the simple reason is that this microcontroller is just simply slow. So a 16 megahertz microcontroller is not uh, fast enough because when I try it with a STM32 microcontroller, a TNZ 4.0 or ESP32, I get 30,000 and a few uh, samples per second. So probably it's a bit uh, slower than it should be, but uh, nevertheless, uh, it's still fast enough. So plus minus uh, 400 or 300 samples uh, doesn't really uh, make a difference, I think. So then another good uh, test would be to actually measure voltage with this. So for this test, I prepared a 100K potentiometer and uh, I will feed the potentiometer from the five volt of the board and uh, measure the output of the potentiometer with the multimeter. I will tell you the value and then I just press uh, the letter A and then we will see if the AD converter sends back the same number. So according to the multimeter we have 2.242 volts and uh, I have to change the input, uh, the channels, because now this is connected to pin number 6 and 7 so it will be a differential input and on the pin 6 and 7. And if we go to this part where we select the multiplexer, 
uh, we see that we need to use differential and uh, we have to use a comment similar to this. And I know that MD0 is the diff 0, 1, so the 0 is the positive, the 1 is the negative, or in differential mode it doesn't matter, but just for convenience I say it like this. And then I have diff 2, 3, and then 4, 5, and 6, 7, so that will be MD3. So I select that, MD3. Uh, So this is done, and then I just send a single reading, and 2.239, so that is not so far from 2.242. As you can see, yeah, it can be whatever, uh, depending on how I sample. There it is, 2.242. So of course, if I average enough time and uh, so on and so on, I can get the same or similar readings as I get from the uh, multimeter. And then uh, we can do some other type of sampling. For example, if I cycle through the differential inputs, then uh, we can get four columns of data. And you can see that the last column where I actually have a voltage, uh, that is 2.24 something. So we see a data. And here actually we can try something funny. So I close this, and from the tools I get the serial plotter, and uh, I change this, and just send the D again. So you can see this orange, that is different than the other three, because the other three are floating, but this is connected actually to a potentiometer. So if I turn the potentiometer, that should show something different and you can see that it shows. So let's do something more uh, spectacular. So now I'm turning the potentiometer up and down. Down to zero, and then I press up. So we can plot the data, as you can see, and it uh, shows up very nicely. So yeah. Uh, this works as well, and I can send this to stop everything. So I think this uh, concludes the video, because as you could see, both the code and the hardware work uh, very well. So I think I'm uh, satisfied with it at least, and if you are planning to use it, I hope that you will be satisfied as well. So if you want to get a bit more details, please don't forget to visit my website. Link is in the description. As always, I put some extra resources there, some extra pictures, information and so on. So it is worth uh, to visit it. And also don't forget to visit my PCBWay project page because I uploaded and shared this board design there. So you can use PCBWay uh, services and uh, get this board uh, if you want to have a very good uh, data acquisition system. And also visit my GitHub because there you can download the library or since I made this uh, into an official Arduino library, you can just simply go to the library manager as I showed you in the video and uh, download the code from there. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it interesting and learned something and see you in the next video.